we tend to stop talking and forget looking at each other's faces. Every passing day, we keep retreating deeper into our hideouts. What's more interesting is the high-tech gadgets that are to blame for that. This morning, I started my day with a smile and a positive look on my face. Last night, I had parked my car on the street in my neighborhood. Today, I had to find another good spot to park since it was a street cleaning day for its current spot. Anyway, putting it shortly, my arrogant smile lost its place to an angry state once I saw a traffic ticket squeezed between the wiper and the windshield of my beloved car. I let out a curse and I was helpless and pissed off. I put the ticket on the other one, resting in my car's compartment which I got last week. Life is sometimes so mean. Under that depressed mood, I took the subway train. I have found a sitting space and pulled up my smartphone. That's what they call it, but I doubt that. I started checking tweets and some RSS feeds that I'm subscribed to. No wonder that it's the thing I do each and every morning. Hold on. Each and every morning, I said? That's true. That's exactly what I said. On my sitting space, I have done something totally new on the train today. I have rolled up my eyes and looked at other people on the train. There should be other people on the train as well, right? But how am I supposed to know it? I never look around the train thanks to my gadget. Guess what I saw? Okay, I'm telling you. Almost everybody was looking at their smarties just the way I keep doing. Almost everybody was so busy with their phones, or iPads, or Kindles, or so whatever. What the heck is going on? We humans shut ourselves down and live in our cells. More weird, we call it individual freedom. It's ironic everybody is into Facebooking or tweeting on a social communication motive while they desocialize themselves, including me in their daily lives. And this is something, buddy. Really something. We are so involved in high-tech revolution that we start losing our regular social behavioral patterns. For example, we talk to others way less than we had done five years or ten years back. On the other hand, we're texting or messaging more and more by each passing day. Our mouth began to stay close while our fingers are racing on a keyboard. Oh, by the way, I use the word almost since only one young girl was in disregard of this social fact and she was having fun looking at the others around. For a moment, our looks bumped and we smiled at each other. I believe she found this trigonomic situation way fun for herself. Imagine for a moment, you're working among separating panels in your work environment. You hardly see other coworkers, and all you do is look at your screen for eight hours a day. Next, you quit the office and walk to the subway station, the only walking time we keep for our private lives during any day. On your walk, you feel so curious about the expected messages on your circle of friends, you keep your eyes on your phone close to the screen in order not to miss these messages. Ooh la la, you're home. What? But I was supposed to be on the subway before the house. Yes, you were. Dumb, dumb. But you were so focused on your screen that you did not even notice you had a social event. That is a subway trip. And eventually, you wound up in your home. Please note I just noticed. I mean we by giving examples using the word you. I guess I try to keep myself off the blame. Do you know what it's called? It's a typical social isolation. In other words, we are getting more and more recluse. You can say that you are in contact with others through your cell phone. Yes, this fact could sound a bit relieving. However, is it really an equivalent replacement of genuine physical social activity? I really doubt that. When was the last time you said you volunteered for any job in a social gathering? This issue needs a lot of talk. Please send me your messages and what you think on it. I want to repeat what's on my mind. We humans should give our time to talk, to laugh with others in our communities. Listening is a great way of communicating to others. Once somebody listens to me, I feel respect to that person. Maybe mingling with other people might give us a chance to help someone. Yes, this is one of my sacred words in my social vocabulary. It's the same like to give away. Nothing makes me feel happier once I see the smile on the face of somebody I tried to help with. There is an interesting story taken from the book Chicken Soup for the Golden Soul and based on a true story which quoted from an article in Arizona newspaper in 1985 about a call for action to save others. Bob Butler lost both his legs because of a mine explosion during the Vietnam War in 1965. He returned as a war hero. Twenty years later, he proved that heroism comes from the heart. One day in summer,
Butler was working in the garage in a small town in Arizona. At that moment, he heard a woman screaming hysterically from the back of his neighbor's house. He pedaled his wheelchair into the house and headed to the backyard. But there is a locked fence that does not allow the wheelchair to pass. The veteran has then got out of the chair, jumps over the fence with both hands, and crawled through the bushes and grass as soon as possible. I shall soon get there, he said, no matter whether it will be painful and hurt my body. When Butler arrived at the back of the house, he followed the screams that had come to the pool, where there's a three-year-old daughter lying at the bottom of the pond. The boy was born with no arms, fell into a swimming pool, and could not swim. Her mother stood at the edge of the pool, yelling hysterically. Butler immediately dived to the bottom of the pool and brought Stephanie out. His face was so blue, there was no heartbeat and no breathing. Butler immediately gave artificial respiration when Stephanie's mother called the fire department, 911. She said all the firefighters are out on duty, and no officer was in the office. With no hope, she cried and hugged Butler's shoulders. While continuing to give artificial respiration, Butler calmed down Stephanie's mother. Do not worry, he said. I've become his hand to take him out of the pool. He'll be fine. Now I'm into her lungs. Together we will get through. Two minutes later, the little girl coughed, regained consciousness, and began to cry. As they hugged each other to gave thanks, Stephanie's mother asked how Butler knew everything will be solved properly. When both my legs in the Vietnam War exploded, I was alone in the middle of the field, Butler said. No one wants to come help except a young Vietnamese woman. With difficulty, she dragged my body to the village and she whispered with his bad English, Everything is okay. You can live. I became your feet. Together we can get through it all. Right now, it's my turn, said Butler to Stephanie's mother, to reply all that I have received.